So David's kindly uh, gonna do a Q&A session. Our students are all behind the camera. They'll ask a question, David will answer. We don't know what the question's gonna be, so this could be interesting. And um, we know the rules at college, we can't. I'm being on my best behavior. On your best behavior. <laughs> if it cuts at any point, you know we've had a small issue. That's what I would suggest. Okay then, so we're gonna open the questions up. So have you got a question for me? So what's the best advice you can give to these learners about trying to get in an apprenticeship? Uh, obviously it's difficult. Um, there's, uh, I'm not sure what it's like out there for apprenticeship places. Uh, I know personally uh, I'm unable to take one at the moment because I, I'm not able to expand the business at present for various reasons. Um, but uh, I do get people um, asking me if, if there are apprenticeship opportunities. And the thing to do um, really is to Try and set yourself out from all the other applicants that are saying, asking for the, the same sort of places. And, and one of the things that I get, I'll get something like an email come in um, saying something like, uh, hi, I'm Brian, I'm on level two at Warwickshire College, have you got any apprenticeships? And it'll all be in lowercase, it'll have sent from my iPhone written underneath it, and uh, it won't be to me personally, I've obviously sent it out to, to everybody, and, and you think, well, come on, son, you've just sent that from your table at the pub, haven't you? You haven't put any thought, any effort into it, you're not really applying to me, it's just a generic application. Um, and I, I always try and respond um, personally to every application, because um, I, I know what it's like to, to send out scattershot emails like that and not get any response, it can be disheartening. So I try to re send a personalised reply saying, unfortunately, I can't take anybody on this time. Um, uh, and, um, <clears throat> sorry, it's my train of thought there. <coughs> so you can't take them on at the moment, but you did say to me off camera that you have, and that people also ask for work experience. Is oh, that yes, something yeah, you can accommodate? That's it, that's what I was going to say. Um, I do always say to them, if, no, if no better opportunity comes along, no better option comes along, then uh, you can come out for some work experience on the van to see what the life is like, to play with the tools, to have experience of obviously you've done stuff in the classroom environment, but to see it out on site uh, and to see how uh, my colleague Nigel and I interact with customers. And also the, uh, if you want to see that sort of thing, the, the, the other side of running the business, the paperwork side, the certification that you might not be involved with at, at this sort of stage, um, quote preparations, invoicing, all that sort of stuff. It's all, it's all open now. I'm quite happy to show off any of that kind of stuff to anybody who wants to see it. Um, but uh, by the same token, although I, I put out those sort of personal res responses and make that offer, I never get anything back from them saying, oh, thanks very much for that. Uh, wow. And, and I would say that if, if someone's taken the time to respond to you, if you if you've put something out there and, they've, and someone, whether it's a big company or a small one, if someone's responded to say, Thanks for your uh, thanks for your inquiry, but we, we can't take anyone on at this time. Do go back to them and say thanks for getting back to me. Would you consider keeping me on file in case any opportunities arise in the future? Because obviously, from a personal level, whoever that person is, whether that's a one man bandish like me, or whether it's someone uh, at a larger firm, say like Clarks and Evans, who may be working in personnel or something, if they if they're after people in the future, they're more likely to look at what applicants have, have come in and 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 someone who's sent in a very short request via their phone while they're half cut down the pub isn't going to stand out against the, the nice polite person who wrote in and asked to be kept on file and who, who showed genuine interest in the yeah. company, said, I want to work for your company, uh, addressed it to a particular person at the company perhaps or at least mentioned the company in the, in the application so that it didn't look like it was just a, a scatter shot. And if you link that with maybe that you've done a bit of work experience with them, maybe a week, two weeks, every other Friday or something like that, and you're on record, they'll go, well, remember when we had X on work experience, that was 18 months ago. It might even be a case yeah. of just looking back and thinking exactly. that person was really good, we're in a different position now. Do ask for that as well. If you, if you say, if you're asking for whether they have apprenticeship apprenticeship opportunities, do ask them, if, if, if even if they don't, is there any opportunity for um, work experience there? Because it's something to put on your CV. And again, you're all in competition, not only with each other, but with all sorts of other colleges around. Uh, and if you can set yourself out, you've got to sell yourself and set yourself out slightly higher against anybody else who's making the same application. If you can uh, get your foot in the door, so to speak, and, and be somewhere where you where you can show you, you've got some skills on the tools or you can um, do something useful, yeah. then as Gaz said, if an opportunity arises in the future, they're more likely to say, oh, let's get let's get Brian in rather than let's get... Yeah, someone fresh just having to write that week. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's 
Really good question. I think that's a really good piece of advice. I think we're moved away from the generic text or hopeful email. We know that we've got a bigger process to go through for us who are trying to gain an apprenticeship and that stuff we've been working with you as well. So any other questions then? Let's have another one. So a question here. What made you want to start YouTube? Okay, so the question was, what made you want to start YouTube, David? <laughs> I'm questioning whether it was a good idea. Now I must admit, but uh, <laughs> well, let, let's link that to the day's money you're not earning today and the diesel that left your van as you drove all the way to us and back again. Yeah, well, I, it's. Um, I, I have to admit, I, I've been very naive with YouTube. I, I, I thought what, what I. What I've always done since starting the business is I've written articles for my website, blog articles, free advice articles, because what I want people to do, customers, potential customers in my area, is to, when they're Googling to find an electrician or whatever, is to go, oh, this guy looks like, well, it looks like he knows what he's talking about, even if he perhaps doesn't. Edit. But um, if, if they can see that, you know, that I've got some passion and some interest in, in it, then it, again, it's like it's a, the, the selling yourself thing again, putting your, yourself above your peers. Someone looking at the content on my website will hopefully be swayed more than um, Joe Bloggs Electrical, who says very little on his and who doesn't sell himself. And it was all part of that, really. And in my naivety, I did think that uh, if I if I did a few chat things on YouTube, just again to sort of sell myself as a person, so that anybody l looking for someone to rewire their house or whatever, some some larger job perhaps, would think oh, we, we don't need to look around anymore. This guy looks like he's he's the one for us. He, he looks like he, he, he can do the job. He seems to know what he's talking about. And you find that the early videos are a lot more sort of obviously stiffer uh, and formal. Uh, and that's just because that I assumed at the time I would have perhaps 20 subscribers and there'd be local people and that, you know, no one would be paying any attention to anything I said. Uh, but what seems to have happened is that um, people uh, in your sort of... Um, situations, the sort of people who are learning about the, the industry looking to break into it, they seem to be becoming the audience. And, and, and as from our point of view, that's, that's why we pick you up, because you're the first person to have the art fault detection device and try and get it to trip. You're the first person to install an SPD that I found and that was in your own house. Yeah. So it's, it's those things that we're, we're trying to bring to life, When you, and you were first to those. Other people have done it since, and that's where w we went to your YouTube channel to pick those up. So whereas it started off as maybe as a marketing tool, yes. it's actually developed into a little bit of a training tool as well, I believe. It has. Uh, it sort of naturally developed that way, and I didn't. it wasn't my intention but I'm quite happy for it to be there as long as people think I've still got something relevant to say but also <coughs> um, I, I do it for my own benefit because if you take something like SPD obviously as an installer out there I've got to get my head around what the new regs are and yep. I haven't had a lot of experience installing SPDs it's not really been on the radar yep. uh, for someone who deals mainly in domestic work as I do until 18th edition came out so I've got to get it into my head what, what are these things how do I install it because I've got to comply with these regs I need to know what I'm doing out there um, so I'll take some time to, to put the research in and, and make, make the video or write the article for the website. And then in the future, when I, if I haven't used that technology for a while, it's been a while since I've, I've done it, rather than having to research it all again, I go, uh, yeah, I, I, I've already got an article that I wrote on this, or I've wow. already got a, a video I've done on this, and I can remind myself. And, and every now and again, I do need to rewatch my own videos just to remind myself, or, or reread re my old, older articles just to remind myself, uh, why, 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 was, why is this the case here? Which regulation was it that, that said that I had to do it that way? And rather than look at it, look at it in, in the regs book, I can go back to previous research if you like so it's, it's got a selfish point of view as well as a, a marketing point of view. That, that's refreshing for me so as we sit in front of these learners you're saying to yourself you're training yourself you're producing the material for your own personal reference as well as giving it to everybody else because you're constantly invested in your own training your own learning that hasn't stopped since you become an electrician it it never stops. no it doesn't that's that's fantastic and hence the, the the member of e5 as well which is always nice to see yeah that we're continuing that learning process of passing that learning on as well which is obviously a lot yeah, of and ethoses. also of course I, I don't know if my my interpretation of these things is right with things something like AFDDs or someone SPDs. will tell you very quickly on YouTube yeah. right? <laughs> YouTube's full of experts and if, if I uh, if I put something out on a public forum like YouTube saying that this is what my interpretation how I'm doing it then others can obviously can jump in and say don't think you got it right and that has happened yeah I have I have in the past said something that that was wrong and someone picked me up on it in the comments so oh, well regulation whatever says this oh, 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 we'll see about that all right, they're, they're right. Yeah, and, that's good. And I've been, uh, yeah, I've been getting it wrong. And interestingly, in the in the regs books, I highlight stuff I find interesting in the regs book. I know it's it's pretty sad, uh, but I'd, you're in the right company. When they pointed it out, it was something I previously highlighted. So it's obviously something I'd read in the past and thought, oh, that's interesting, and then forgotten because no one can retain all that information in that 
dreadful technical document. Um, you know, and if they can, well, I don't want to be having a pint with them. So you know, it's you can only squeeze so much in there, and you will forget some of it if you're not working in that particular part of it all the time. A really good question. Marketing first, training second, personal development as well, and continued revisiting your own personal development. Really good reason why I did his YouTube channel. Let's take another question. What made you start by yourself? So why did you start working for yourself? Uh, I, I'd run a, pre, a previous business. I, I was never uh, an uh, electrical apprentice. My apprenticeship was in the communications industry um, many moons ago. Is that breaking news? Um, I don't know. I think I've said it before. Okay. Uh, I can't remember now. Anyway, um, so I, I, I was never an electrical apprentice. I've always worked in the technical industry, one way or another, uh, with uh, telecommunications, electronics, um, uh, in information technology, various fields, uh, both permanent and contract. I had run a previous business in the early 2000s doing that. Um, so I had some experience of running a business before where I was a contractor being sent all over the place. Uh, and then I, I worked for a few years as a permanent employee and um, I did a lot of work that was office based until I decided to move and I, basically I'd had enough. I, there was the, the, the job I was in had a future. They, they said you, you can stay but we are, we are downsizing, there are, there are voluntary redundancies going. Um, your job's safe. Uh, but I thought, you know what, I, I think I'll just take the money and run at this point. So I, um, I wanted to, to go into electrics, first of all because uh, I viewed it as a slow moving field, something that doesn't change an awful lot, which as you get older, change becomes harder. <laughs> Uh, which is interesting because we were talking earlier about all the, the new smart tech stuff yep. coming in. Now, I, I, I want to keep that to arm's length. I don't want anything to do with that because that, that's the kind of fast moving thing that I wanted to get away from. So, And I'm selling it as the dream to this lot because uh, yeah, they're all over it. But you guys, you'll be all right with it because you've grown up with it. I, I, I've got no interest in learning something new like that. I'm quite happy to pull cables and I'm quite happy with how electricity works and how I can wire up somebody's house and uh, in, in perform installation and fault finding work. I don't really want to or need to get into a new line at this point. Um, so I did it because I viewed it as a, um, something that I could transfer my skills into. Uh, obviously I knew there was going to be a lot of training involved. I knew it was going to cost me a lot of money. I put about 14k into getting the business going. It's not cheap. A lot of people think, oh, electrics is easy. It's not like plumbing where you need a van full of pipe bending stuff and or gas safe or a gas engineer yeah. we need your gas safe. So electrics are just some VDE screwdrivers in the boot of your car. Well, you can start off that way, but you'll quickly find that there's an awful lot of kit. I've got a transit out there, chock full of stuff. It is, yeah. <laughs> and uh, thousands of pounds spent uh, invested in equipment, in office processes, in um, uh, materials and marketing and all sorts of other things that you don't want to spend your money on. Accreditation as well as NIC, ECA, which that's about 1500 quid a year just blown on accreditation. Yeah. Um, so it, it, is, it can be an expensive game to get into. Um, it, and uh, the advantages? I, I did it because I, I, did, I wanted to be my own boss again. That's the one I like. Um, I wanted some control over what I was doing. I knew it was going to be the last career choice I would be going into. It's this until I fall off a ladder now uh, yeah. or get zapped by that zappy thing over there that we were just playing with earlier until, until I make some stupid mistake, that's it. Um, it is very hard work with running your own business. It does occupy all of my time. Uh, I, usually I get to the end of the day and I'm on the computer doing the office work for a significant period of time. And then I play Fortnite very badly for a short time, with very bleary eyed. And then I go to bed and wake up again the next day and it all starts again. But it takes up all my weekends, all my evenings. Uh, I'm surprised I find any time to make these YouTube videos, to be fair. <laughs> we'll take one more before we go for dinner. So let's have that last question then, folks, before we go for dinner. What direction do you think the electrical industry is going in? Oh, wow, how long we got. So which wow. direction do we think the electrical industry is going in? Well, as I say, it, 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 there are places you can specialise. Um, you're always going to have that, that core industry, which is the bit that I want, which is um, the cable pulling, the fault finding, the installation, generic installation work. There are some exciting new fields, though, if you're interested in that sort of thing, like renewable energy technologies and like smart home technologies. 
Um, I charge in, we talked about earlier as well. We did, yeah. Some, some of them are more awkward to get into than others. I, I was MCS accredited for solar PV a few years ago, it didn't last long, the paperwork's a nightmare. Uh, I've not got into car charging, I've done the course, um, but then I looked it up and found the paperwork was a nightmare. Um, and, and so just clarify this because we did off camera, it isn't installing the car charging unit that's a nightmare, it's the customer wants a grant from the government, yeah. so they either don't pay or pay very little for it, and that becomes the contractor's responsibility to draw that funding down. Unfortunately, yeah, the, the government, uh, they, they try to make it so that the there's no chance you can rip off the customer, and they try and make it so that you can, um, so that the customer can get financial incentives for these sort of things, renewable technologies, car charges, that sort of stuff, but they don't often make it difficult for you as an installer to jump through all the hoops to offer that to your customers. So installing something like solar PV, not a problem. Installing something like car charges, electrically easy, but being able to do it in a way that produces the paperwork that the client needs in order to be able to get money back from the government is a nightmare and it's all geared up to larger companies. Very difficult for a small contractor like myself who might only do a few a year yeah. to keep up and maintain the, the requirements for it. So what we're saying there is the background paperwork on a large firm would be done by clerical and the installation team goes out and does um, solar panels, yeah. photovoltaics, they do car charging units, they do ground source heat pumps, anything yeah. that can get a grant, but of course the paperwork isn't being done by the, the small contractor. That becomes another job and David didn't want to get involved. Oh, we're not talking that. about certification paperwork, no. I mean, that's, obviously that, that's easy enough, the grants, it, 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 is, it? it is the government paperwork, but um, so it depends on what you want to do. I, I don't do industrial work, I know my limits and that's, that's not something I want to be into. Uh, I, mainly I'm domestic, I'm quite happy with that, it makes for a fairly relaxed day for old man Nigel and me, we, uh, we, we have our pub lunch if we can and uh, you know, we, don't, we, don't, we try not to bust the gut, we try and grow the guts rather than bust them these days, but it depends on what, what, what you, if there's a particular aspect of it that you think, oh that's exciting, that's something I want to be into, especially if you're, like, if you're into computers for example, then the smart home stuff may be your cup of tea, I don't want anything to do with it myself, but if there's some area that you think uh, that rather than just house bashing, that, that, that could actually be quite good for me to get into and to make a bit of cash out of, then all fun means go for it. That's good. So I'm sure we'd all like to thank David for those words of wisdoms. <laughs> 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 <laughs>